A convincing win for England to wrap up the series yesterday and they'll want to make it a clean sweep today. We are in glorious sunny Cape Town for the final game in this series. Welcome to live coverage of the third test between South Africa and England, live from the Belleville Velodrome in Cape Town. Good morning. Two close games and lots of positives to take for both sides over the last two days. Jess Thirlby must be pleased with a series win in her first two games in charge of the Roses, but perhaps even more so seeing young talent coming to the fore and some new combinations working so well. For South Africa too, a glimpse of the future and a squad that could continue to challenge at the highest level. Pamela Cookie has returned to be with us. I'm, I'm delighted that England's World Cup captain Serena Guthrie is here to give us her insights. Welcome ladies and of course we are global once again with intrepid reporter and commentator Caroline Barker out in Cape Town and Tums in Greenway at a tastefully decorated secret location as she skillfully juggles being a new mum with being a netball guru. Welcome Tums in. If you missed any of the last two days here's how the series scores look on Friday night. We saw the game going into extra time and England beating South Africa by five goals. The the same deficit yesterday in normal time. Can they make it a clean sweep? Three from three. We'll find out the first centre pass in just under half an hour's time. Serena, over to you first. What did you see from the England Roses yesterday? I think what we saw was an incredibly classy performance towards the end of that game in particular. I think, it, you know, there was a lot of talk yesterday around some error rates and just people getting a bit more familiar with themselves and the combinations out there. And I think George Fisher was um, a great injection into the game and it was amazing just to see her stand up and be counted within that team yesterday. It was a great performance from her. Yes, yeah, some great impact players yesterday. Who was key for you 24 hours ago? Yeah, for me, Nat Haythornthwaite, captain Nat. Um, she has come on leaps and bounds in that role she is really making that wing attack position her own her speed and her vision off the ball so the work that she does in advance before she gets it like we see it this take on the edge of the circle great core stability to hold that in and then pass that into Ellie Cardwell under the post but it's this here that I love how she's not af afraid when the defender comes out and then sees the backspace where Kadeen is off on that hold to be able to put that in her vision into the circle what a pass it's phenomenal she's accurate she's ballsy and her footwork yeah. that step change there so good you can't teach that she's got natural flair Serena what is she like to play with she's a breath of fresh air you know she's always someone that just wants to do her best for the team and I think you can see that throughout this series she's someone who's just gone out and consistently performed and performed very well in what has been a really tough test series so I think you know it's just great for us just to see that just pretty much as this is her blossoming period now as, as a player and as a leader within the team. Yeah, she's having a, she's had a great couple of days. We look forward to seeing her play today. Now, Caroline Barker is at the Velodrome in Cape Town and I believe it's afternoon out there, isn't it, Caroline? Afternoon, Di. Afternoon, Serena. Afternoon, our greatest ever goal attack, Pamela Cookie. That's your official title. So what have we learned over the past three days in Cape Town? Clearly, I shouldn't be in the full sun. Bill Tong doesn't agree with me. But also, also, Stacey Francis is like she's never been away. Ellie Cardwell, so calm, so composed. Kadeen Corbin, also throughout this team, perfect combinations. Well, at least work in progress. Something for Jess Thirlby to think about then as we head into the new year. They've got that series win under the belt. The first for her, clearly, clearly plenty more to work on. But for them, taking home this particular little beauty in their hand luggage, well, that's a start, isn't it? She's got safe hands, no <laughs> butter fingers there. She'd be on my team any day. What about I'll yours? I'll take it, I'll take it. Yeah, really? Yeah. Uh, let's talk to Tamsin, who's got those wonderful flowers behind her. Uh, Tamsin, I'm a minor in the post, by the way. You got my present there, Thanks. which is good. Um, I did indeed. So tell us about yesterday and what you saw. What was the difference yesterday in comparison to Friday evening? Oh, look, look I think we there was certain objectives coming into this test series. Um, there'll be clearly wanted to win and with the lineup she's played she's got that she's got the two test series victories which is fantastic and it means they can go in with a more relaxed vibe what i've been really impressed with is the fight and i think it's been very different between england and south africa south africa remind me of england sort of four or five years ago when we couldn't always quite get it over the line england never looked like they're going to lose even in the pressure situations they're riding out the momentum and that's down to some key players I still think there's some questions around um, the goalkeeper position, whether Raz Quashi will get another go. I think Stacey France has been exceptional there, but it's more been about the partnership with her and Fran Williams. So I'd love to see Quashi get 
get some more court time out there. And of course, that shooter position as well. And, and the, uh, Serena and Pambo alluded to uh, George Fisher, the impact she made when she came on yesterday. Um, so I think it's been it's been a great series so far for England, and I'm really impressed that they've managed to carry on that grit and determination and that understanding of how to grind out games. We will be uh, hearing from George Fisher very shortly. It's a, it's a nice conundrum to have, isn't it, having these options. Let's have a look at the starting seven that Jess has chosen for this final match. And any change, we see Kate Shimon coming into that goal defence position. And over to you, Pam. Are you pretty excited to see Sophie Drakeford-Lewis start at goal attack? Oh, I'm loving it. Lo she is such an up-and-coming player. Um, we've seen her do so well in Super League, and so I I'm really excited to see what she can do now on this international scene. I think Jess has been really good. The only two players that haven't played so far, um, Kate and Sophie, so um, it's good that they've got a chance to start this um, this game. Serena, first cap for Kate Shimon. How will she be feeling? Yeah, I think I'm um, pretty excited and nervous, as I think all of us are when it comes to, you know, getting that first one under your belt um, for your country. But look, I'm sure that she'll be raring to go. Uh, you know, Jess alluded to how well she'd been training, so I'm sure she'll be chomping out a bit to get out there and, and contribute to this test series. Yeah, Tams, in that combination of Stacey Francis and Kate Shimon, what do you uh, what do you make of that? Do you think it's going to be successful over the next 60 minutes, or it might even be 15 minutes? We don't know because she <laughs> likes to Jess likes to mix things up a bit. Yeah, look, I think I think the Stacey Francis and Fran Williams is, is already cemented, and that's really good. It's so difficult to make. Um, three or four combinations in, in certain positions because, you know, at training, you're only getting a certain amount of time with a certain amount of players. So I'm sure Thurby would have had ideas about who she kind of wanted to partner with who. Uh, it's a great opportunity for Shimon. She'll bring in that Australian style. Um, she'll be a lot more hassly. She's really rangy. The players talk about um, at training that Haven work saying just how big her arms are. So look out for that. And that will be key against um, some of those smaller attacking South Africans if Bongi and Somi is out there on the front as well. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see. Um, I think what's been great about this squad is that they have been able to chop and change it up. And because they can go into this game relaxed now, how amazing for somebody like Sophie Drakeford Lewis and Kate Sheeran to step out of court with, with limited pressure. They'll still want to win, but you know, you've got that title in the bag so they can go out there and just play their game. And I'm sure Jess will be saying that to them. Yeah, we hope to uh, we look forward to seeing, hopefully, times in some fearless performances. Well, a short while ago, Caroline Barker caught up with the England head coach, Jess Thirlby. Let's hear from her now. <laughs> Jess, a first start for Kate Shimon, you're thinking behind that? Just because, the, as I said right at the beginning of the test series, the margins between everyone are really small. Kate's been training very well. She toured with us over in Australia and New Zealand and built some really good connection very early on for somebody brand new to the group. Uh, and it seems fitting that today, surrounded by support and players that have experienced these first two matches, to slot her in in front of Stacey and see what they can do as a partnership. And have you said to them this is about playing for places come January? Uh, well, I haven't really looked too far ahead, to be honest. We're very much kind of making sure we get purpose out of today's match. Uh, the girls and I are both driven by an improved performance today, so we want to be better today than we were yesterday. Uh, and they've been pretty ruthless at still looking at video in the areas where they either want more consistency or they want to be better. So I'm looking forward to what we can do in Game 3. All right, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a couple of changes in the team. Kate Shimon coming into that goal defence position and uh, Sophie Drake for Lewis playing goal attack if you're just joining us and England going for three wins from three. Pam, the, uh, the mood in the dressing room, this, this squad of uh, 15, which is cut to 12 today, four of the, the girls were members of the Netball World Cup squad. New faces in there. It's an exciting time for England Netball right now. Uh, gelling new combinations. Definitely, and I think, as you said, it's that gel. We see that they look like they're enjoying themselves. They look like they've really bonded as a team. I think Jess said in that they, they've come into this series with a purpose and with a, a, a plan in place, and she's been able to execute that because the players have worked with what she was trying to do. And she's coming into this last game with having played everyone bar two. She's starting with those two that she hasn't played yet, so she's had a chance to see everybody out there. Um, and I think, as you say, this is a great place for England to be at the start of the four-year cycle and performing, grinding it out, as T said, and still putting out those top performances. Uh, Serena, you're obviously you're taking a little break from netball at the moment and so watching from afar. Um, the part of you, I'm sure, wishes you were in South Africa. But what you're seeing at the moment, are you seeing the England roses blossom and bloom? 
Yeah, definitely. Look, personally, I'm not surprised to see us still being successful and challenging and grinding out wins because we're so confident in the players that we've got coming through. Um, to see everyone just going out there and just playing with, with freedom, with, together, um, having fun, like Pam said, I think as a you know a current member of the team who you know not necessarily being involved in the moment, it's just amazing to see. But this is what we know we're capable of. So for me, it's just great to see the girls going out there and, and just achieving and doing what we all know we can. Well, one of the impact players yesterday was George Fisher, and she was pretty impressive on court. And she spoke to Caroline Barker at yesterday. Clearly, you've just played, I'm not saying the game of your life, I've seen some pretty special games from you, but what was that like for you stepping out in Cape Town? It was intense. At times, it's so, so, so loud in here that, like, the whistle blows and, like, you still can't, like, hear it. And it's just crazy, like, the atmosphere is just, like, electric in here. So it's sort of, like, exciting to, like, go on, but also the noise and stuff. And I was just like, right, go on. And then I was like, just, just sing the first shot. Is this for you about, right, I'm cementing my position in this England team? Obviously, you want to cement your position and you want to really get in there and give it your best shot. But I think I'm thinking more about, like, the process rather than the outcome. So I'm thinking, right, I need to get in there, I need to work hard, and I need to grind away, be hitting the gym, trying to sink them shots. What's Jess said to you about that? Oh, me and Jess have had quite a few chats and she's just like, come on, George, like, we're just chatting away at it and sort of talking about that, what the process entails and sort of how that's going to go. And like, yeah, she's very good with chatting to us all. She's open on it, so yeah. You do your talking on court. You also do it with your feet. Show us them. I don't know if you want to pick them up. They smell really bad. I don't want to smell them. <laughs> Uh, rather you than me. So bad. My mum's had so many remedies in them. I've got my sweaty feet. <laughs> tell, tell me about these though, because they mean a lot to you. Yeah. So these are like these are called LeBron Qualities. So it's kind of like as if if you can see like everything on the black shoe, um, on the on the white shoe. So like we've got white shoe, black laces, black shoe, white laces. So it's literally like the black and the white, and just like so as it says it's quality. So yeah. It's quite exciting. I, I, I really like sort of the message behind it. And my brother picked them out and was like, do you like these? And I was like, oh, yeah, they're really cool. And he told me the message behind them. I was like, yeah, no, I really like them. I was like, let's get them. And, and it meant a lot to be wearing them here in, in Cape Town. Yeah, no, definitely. Because obviously, like, with the history here and stuff, being able to go out there and play, play in my trainers and everything that's going on at the moment, I think it's pretty special. What would it mean to you, though, to take this series 3 nothing. We've got people that have got, like, no caps. We've got people, say, Clark, that are in like, 170th cap. So, yeah, we've got a real mix of people. And it means a lot to, that they've got, like, almost like the younger ones coming through and sort of coming away with, like, a 3 nil would just mean a lot to us. Uh, so, like, the South Africa are an amazing side, so coming out and sort of doing that would be really, really good. International stage, sinking goals, wearing the shoes, having the smile too. Having the time of your life? OK, having the time of my life, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you have that one.
The players are arriving at the Belleville Velodrome. The England Roses looking for three from three. Headphones on, game face on. Direct Barden Horse has chosen a slightly different starting seven to yesterday. And with the next World Cup hosted by South Africa in 2023, uh, Caroline sat down with the head of Netball South Africa to find out more about her hopes for the future of the sport in this country and her own journey to this point. My path was in coaching. I wanted to be a coach. I was once the assistant coach of the national team. So my path was, why can't I go and be the head coach of the, you know, of the national team? And then as I went along, my province said, we want you to be the president of the province. My district said, we want you to be the chairperson of the district. I'm one person, when people approach me, I become open and open to ideas and to say, why do you want me to do that? When you give me reasons that I understand why you want me to do that, I'll try it. I've tried it and it worked in my district. I've tried it, it worked in my province. And people came to me to say, you know, we think it's time for Netport South Africa to have change in leadership. And we think you're the right person. I said to them, let me go and talk to my late husband and understand whether he will support me or support the idea. Because at the end of the day, I've got a six month old baby. When I went home, he was one person who said to me, netball is your passion. You love netball with everything you have. Go for it. If people want you, go and save the nation. We are here to support you. That really humbled me. After that, wow, things just changed in netball and started rolling. I remember one day when I said to Blanks, the CEO, we need to, to, to do this World Cup thing. I mean, it wouldn't harm anyone. Let's go and try. And you know what? I had to cross so many bridges that I cannot even tell you about here for us to get this World Cup 2023, to convince INF in this country we had to cross so many bridges. But it's here, and we're happy. And when you look at this, this team and what they've overcome, how significant is that for young women growing up in South Africa, to have the World Cup here, to have role models? Right now, I think Bongi has got more role models than anyone in this country, except for Sia, for, for the Springboks. Everybody wants to be like Bongi. They see that a young girl from Hammondsdale, which is a rural area, can make it out of that kind of a situation and make something out of life and become something that people look up to and become a role model. It can happen. You can go and play netball professionally and make a living out of netball. This will change a lot of things because right now we, they also know that you are not in the team because of you black. You're there on merit. You're there because of your performance, not because of the color of your skin. And that's what I like about what we're doing now. Our dream as Netball South Africa is to turn Netball professional. I mean, for us to beat the likes of England, of, of, of England, they've got a professional league going on. We need to have one. We have to be realistic. You have to compare apples with apples here. We're hoping that by 2023, when we host the World Cup, we will have a professional league. When you are the host, I'm closing my eyes now because I believe when you're the host, that's the only goal you have, to say you want to represent your country and represent it well and go to be the last two that are playing the finals. And I hope... And I know in my heart that the girls won't disappoint because this is the home ground. Remember, in our language, you, it means you don't follow a snake into its hole because it will bite you. So that's the language. Oh, a lot of hard work being done behind the scenes by Cecilia and so many out in South Africa. Tamsin Greenway is still with us and I've got the girls in the studio. Um, over to you, Pam, first. What is the, the likelihood of a national league developing in South Africa? Um, they've been trying for a couple of years now to, to get it going. They have the semi-professional league, Telcom, um, which occurs, but it's not at the same standards as, say, our Super League, our VNSL here or in Australia with Suncorp or in New Zealand. So they want to push it. They've got lots of players playing out in those leagues, so they know what it's like. Um, it's now whether they can galvanise. Having the World Cup in 2023 is awesome for them. So can they use that as a catalyst to, to get it going? Yeah, that stage, that huge stage that they'll have in 2023, like we've seen in Liverpool in the summer, Serena, we've seen what it's done for, for netball in England. Hopefully it can raise the profile even further in 2023 in SA. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, we've seen what, what it has done for English netball and the Roses. And I think, you know, they've been fortunate enough to kind of come along, see what that's like, and hopefully they can take all the good things that they saw from our World Cup and inject it into theirs and make it something, again, another step up, because that's what we want. We don't, we want the next World Cup to be even better and better and better. And I think I'm, I'm very excited to see what that World Cup in Cape Town is going to do, not only for the country, but for Netball South Africa, I think is an exciting time for them. 
Tamsin, there's been a lot of looking ahead for South Africa. Is that the right focus? Oh, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because um, there is going to be looking ahead, clearly, because they've got the World Cup coming on. They've got massive ambition of making this professional league. And, and actually, when you go back to the World Cup, I see it as a much bigger picture. It's not just about South Africa. Look at some of the African nations that performed. Imagine having a pro league in, in South Africa where Zimbabwe players, Uganda players can go and even bringing more Caribbean players over into the mix into our league and to the African league. So I think there's two, two parts to this story. Um, I've been not disappointed with South Africa. I think they've had moments where they could have really pushed England. They clawed themselves back into the game. They got there and thereabouts. And they've been quite brave with the changes of the players they brought in. They looked like they had a massive um, purpose about what this test series was all about. I think uh, some of the senior players have looked quite frustrated at times, Potheater especially, when you know these youngsters are coming through and, and they're actually really pushing um, to get to get South Africa where it needs to go. So I think there's two parts to it. They've got to let the organisation worry about the World Cup and the fan base and the team have actually got to focus on what they can do because today they've got a real opportunity to take this game to England. You know, they've got nothing to lose. They've only lost a couple of games um, by a few goals. That is nothing in netball. So if they can get their act together, tidy up some of their possession and actually work with each other, I think they'll be really effective today. It's always a close, gruelling interaction between these two sides, as, as both of you, as all three of you know. This is the starting seven for the SA team. And let's go to the defence first. Serena, we've got uh, Zanel Vimbella starting in that goal defence position. And Shadeen van der Merwe, who was player of the match in game one, moving to wing defence. Do you like the setup there in defence? I do actually. I think we were probably. I thought we were going to see a bit more of Mbella actually during the series. Um, but it, yeah, like you say, it was Shadeen starting in that goal defence position. But I think there's going to be a heck of a lot of range in that circle now. And then you've obviously got Shadeen, who, you know, for me, she is an outright wing defence. She hassles, she creates problems out there. So I think for me, it's, that's for me my strongest back three. So it's going to be an interesting start for England against that range today. Potgita goal attack and we've got Venter coming in at goal shooter when we haven't seen much of her she just came on the court for a few minutes yesterday yeah like a brief I think only about five minutes she played but um Siggy Berger we were told was supposed to start but after that knock yesterday um is not it was a bit of an interaction wasn't it with Stacey yes, Francis yeah. and got a knock to the head exactly she didn't quite land properly and, and hit her head on the on the floor so um it's interesting. She was still named in the 12, though. So they're, they're, they're one shooter down, almost starting off this game. But um, So Vento has been playing out in Australia for the Vixens. So she's got that international experience and that kind of hard gameplay. So it'll be interesting to see how she works with Potgita, both really tall. And so that moving circle, I'll be interested to see what that looks like. I'm on my tiptoes with all of you. So the <laughs> third, uh, third game, the first centre pass is not far away. We're ready for this one. The roses are blooming so far. Can South Africa claw one back and make it 2-1 in this series or can England make it 3-0? We'll find out after the break.
We are in South Africa, live from the velodrome. It's South Africa, England, the third test. I'm here with Serena Guthrie and Pamela Cookie. Serena, we've seen the lineups from both sides, and what are you hoping for from the Roses today, especially in that midcourt? Um, I think, well, I'm looking maybe for a, bit, a little bit more consistency. I think they'll probably be a bit disappointed with some of the errors that they made yesterday. So I think they'll be looking to just tidy up a few of those errors and try and maybe push forward a little bit earlier on in the game rather than letting South Africa back into the, into the game during points throughout the game. So, yeah, looking forward to seeing what they're going to put together. Really looking forward to watching Sophie Drakeford-Lewis out there in particular. I know that she'll be pretty nervous but also very excited about getting out there today. So really excited about what she's going to bring. And I'm sure that lady is as well, Jess Thilby, the new head coach, just her third game in charge. 100% winning record so far, having won the first two. And this is the South Africa side to highlight again. Uh, Rome Dry in that centre position, she started that position on Friday. Yeah, in the first test she was there. She's very good in attack. She helps them drive forward. Not so strong under defence when they brought Gressel in there into centre. It really solidified that a bit. But um, she's new, she's coming up and she's worked a lot with Baden her in her previous the university team so they know each other really well so um, I think for South Africa they really need to step it up today they don't want to go home having lost 3-0 yeah, Barden Horse talking all about belief 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 her team need okay the first centre pass is about to happen let's get straight to commentary out in South Africa hello everyone's waiting well, life is all about firsts, right? First words, first steps, and for the past couple of days, a first glimpse at new beginnings for South Africa and England here in Cape Town. Both teams now knowing that the series is done and dusted. This not just about pride for South Africa, about who makes that plane come January to the UK. And as for England, equally, Jess Thirlby, the coach says she hasn't thought yet about January, but certainly she'll be impressed with the number of players that have stood up and been counted here in South Africa. Viewers joining us from around the world on YouTube, Sky Sports back in the UK and Super Sport here in South Africa. Zanella Dodana, part of the team for Super Sport, alongside me, Zanella, as we wait for the first centre pass. This one, this one counts, right? Absolutely, it does. Caroline, it counts for both teams, but most importantly, I think for the Spa Pro Tiers, they have everything to play for here this afternoon. I did mention that the coach is saying who will be, who will board that plane to England, but more than anything, more than that, pride for me. They cannot allow England to beat them 3 0. It cannot be a clean sweep. Well, already. One of those moments that frustrated and have the past couple of days, although much has been said about the fact that it has been back to back to back. I think the frustration has been more about that extra time and then other 24 hours between it. Jess Thirlby talking to me earlier about this is tournament netball. This is how it sets up at the, the Commonwealth and at the World Cup too. Oh, great recovery then. South Africa. No one wants to score that first goal. Listen, I'm impressed with Pumza Maweni. We've been waiting for her, looking to her to turn that ball for the Spa approaches. Really, she had a hard day in the office yesterday in that second test. But see that she's on her toes in this game already. Off the mark, then the Spa protects. And there's Jay Clark, England's most experienced and capped player. Sophie Drakeford Lewis, one of the young guns in and around that circle. George Fisher, impressive in that second test, South Africa. and gets the first for England. Vantage break, goal defence. Those changes then, Zanella, for South Africa. It's a beautiful little feed in there. And Venter, oh, one of those players attack. we would have seen bar injury at the, the World yeah, Cup. That doesn't count, it was obstruction then. Yeah, that doesn't count for the spa approaches, but really I'm, I'm interested that to see how this combination of Borghita and Fente is going to work. We haven't seen it before, but they I mean, they, they've got that height. Here's Pumza Maweni again on her toes, really Pumza leading in that, in that defensive circle. Side. And this is what we've been looking for. She is yes. the, the experienced defender, so she that should take that leadership. Both players. Side. In that circle for South Africa made their debuts back in 2014, so they have experience in bucket loads. Fisher can't make that stick. And the Merva so impressive, particularly in that first game. 
in that wing defence position. Shimon making her debut for Just England. Side. That's it. Does well to knock that one out of harm's way. Here comes South Africa again. Bannock's contact centre. <laughs> and that one does count. So first look at Kate Shimon. Of course, she's been experienced with Australia, played fast fives for the senior team. Short pass. At the top of the race step. I'm not quite sure if that's a short pass or a stepping error that was called in by the umpire, but here's another opportunity for the Spa Proteas. They've just started this game with a high level of, of urgency and, in, uh, and intensity, so I hope they can maintain this throughout the, the whole game because we've been lacking in those last Side five, line. six minutes of, of the match. We sort of dropped the tempo and uh, allow England, you know, to sort of run away with the match. So, Ella, you've, you've captained South Africa. You are now a, a coach as well. What will you have said of, to this team ahead of this one? Because clearly, disappointment from the last two days. You have Spanish everything to prove, you have everything to go out there and play for, pride for the country, and you know, you are you are worthy and, and you can actually produce a good result against, against England. You, oh. you do let it slip, but get in there and make it happen. Good save. I mean, she's got the high advantage, but good elevation then to make sure that that one came down. Vantage points out wing defence. We must also keep in mind that Jamaica is watching this game, and so is uh, uh, New Zealand. Pumza Maweni. Welcome, Pumza. We've been waiting for you. There is Maweni. Vim Bello, all the hard work done at the back, and now building forward for South Africa. More of a, a patient transition, not trying to force things through. Yes. Again, that's down to the good defensive work from England. Potgita with a step in. Slight hesitation, didn't feel set. This is an unbelievable start from the Spa Proteas, really leading 5-1 in this first quarter. The smoothness on attack, the precision and the and just the accuracy from Fenter and and and, and Port Hitter has just been solid for the Spa Proteas. And they open up their biggest lead. Five goals now, the difference. South Africa, the intent early on. Clearly changes by England. It just feels at the moment that South Africa with a point to prove. You know, there was a question being asked, you know, do we have a specialist wing defence in the Spa Protea side? And because we saw Kanisa Chawane playing there with Shadeen Fanimeva really Contact doing a super job now in this in this wing defence position. We are needing one though, because Shadeen is not a specialist wing defence, and that's definitely something Coach Dory Barnhorst will need to go and look out. A player will need to go and look out for a wing defence to maybe travel with the Spa Proteas come January. Do you see enough of Vandermeer though that she can make that adjustment? <laughs> Francis was close to the edge there again. I think Shadeen is solid on defence, but the defence is such a specialist position, you need to be more of a man-on-man -man -man marking. And Shadeen prefers to play more of an area defensive style. So we need that wing defence that can come there and really smother and sort of eliminate the wing attack. Another error from England. Contact South African send their lead further. Oh, just opened right up. Barn door open, gratefully received. 8 2. So, will this combination of Port Hitter and Fainter last the duration of this game, or will there be a change in that goal attack position? Can Port Hitter run at this high intensity for 60 minutes? Where do you see that South Africa are getting. As that ball's managed. <laughs> Not, not all the luck, but all those those moments are going with South Africa at the moment. Where, where are they getting the head start on England? Definitely just on the smooth transition for me, you know, the attack is so smooth and the fast pace, the balls, they, they're not hesitating and they're placing that ball in the space. Oh my goodness, what a feed to find Fisher right under that ball. That was brilliant from the captain. 
That one will soften the blow. The other impressive. Oh, Francis. And we've seen that a, a few times over the past couple of days, too. Has just sensed when something needs to happen. We're so used to seeing the likes of Serena Guthrie do that. When things need to happen and change for England, you can rely on her or Jeeva Mentor to fly through. Stacey Francis and Fran Williams over the past couple of days with some key intercepts and moments. But it was the call that had already gone before that. England now, lovely soft hands from Clark. And Fisher, just a little turn around and drops through. I'm loving the innovation from Fisher. She's not just standing in the shooting circle and anchoring. You know, she's giving Moeni something to think about because Moeni was really taking those balls from her. She's moving out of the circle oh. and creating play. Yes. How can you eat when there's this level of pressure? She says. I mean, they can't see that I've got a burger in one hand and a milkshake in the other. <laughs> I'm dabbing my brow with some yellow cheese. So. A loose stray ball again from England. Oh, Shimin nearly with some joy. It's a bit slow motion, her shooting action, but effective. And that gap opens up again for South Africa. Under six minutes of this first quarter. Reminder, in this series, just those last couple of quarters in the first game that they nipped ahead of England. So this is impressive from South Africa. Response after those two, and oh, again. That is instruction, shoot up. This is brilliant defensive pressure from South Africa. Everybody playing their part. Even the post helping out a bit there. Obstruction it short. See how smart that was from Pogita. And the net doesn't want to give it up. But it is the the game of the flowers with the roses in town too. But it's South Africa. Proteus at the moment. Extending that lead. Goal attack instruction advantage offside. Oh, it's lunchtime here in Cape Town. Contact centre. Just gone 11 o'clock back home in the UK, but at the moment, this England side needs contact something to wake them up. That. Yes. Can you see changes coming That's on court? Would you use the bench? Yet? You let the, the team work it out. Well, it depends. You know, you don't want this lead to to to, to increase, uh, Caroline. So I don't know if the coach would bring in um, players that she knows can really maybe close this gap, or she'll allow this combination to settle and, and find their feet and show confidence in them and believe that they are able to not allow South Africa to run away in the second quarter. Because that's calm as you like from Drakeford Lewis there. Just all that pressure that South Africa are putting on through court. Yeah, once that ball is in that circle, that overball to Pochetel is pretty much undefendable. Just as impressive that. Ziggy Berger could have been in that circle, but Contact for the, the whiplash defense. injury that she suffered yesterday, she was a late change are, to this team. She's okay, but she's walking around okay. in a, a neck brace. Had been feeling the effects of a heavy fall on court yesterday. Up the other end, Haythorn Thwaite. Just that well read by Drakeford Lewis. South Africa. So my another question to, chip to away. the spa approaches is where was this start? Where was this energy and this commitment in the past two test games that they played? I mean, this is a dream start for the Spa Proteas. Because it's not as if they weren't playing together in the Africa Cup. It's not as if, you know, the majority of this squad were at the World Cup too. It's not as if they're trying out 
new fresh blood through court, is it? Played together, they know each other. Some maybe unfamiliar positions with Van der Merwe in there at the wing defence. Not the time for a cuddle. What did you say in that first Step test? Forward, We've seen that a lot in rugby. I had to go there again. Excuse me. It's the last day the I'm with you, so Ow. I've got to enjoy it. <laughs> in which case, I expect a comment from you on the umpires and how well they've played. We haven't had a lot of whistle, have we? Yep. Not much pinging through okay, the series. Very clear instructions as well. After clearing Stand up that, that early body on body in that first game, break, goal much less hat. physical. The fast couple. Way too easy. Ghosting into that empty circle does Fenter and does not make a mistake at all, converting that ball to take the spa protein as you, this gap is opening up. And whether there'll be action happening shortly, we're seeing some warming up start to happen on that England bench. Those players off the bench and just doing some light warming up in the background. There's more extensive warming up though going on with Kwashi. So whether that might be one of the changes defensively that England might make. So Braz Kwashi come on unfazed. And Francis got that one. Better from England. Well, they've seen their score doubled, so now's a chance to just try and pull them back. I think we will see that change from England in the not too distant future. Garnage offside. Just no way through. There's Fisher, great splits. And there was a rattle on the post England. and another one off. So if we do see a change defensively, is that the issue? Great wrestle back from Haythornthwaite. I think for me, you know, I think Fisher's doing well, but there's a lot of pressure on Fisher, and I'd love to see uh, the goal attack in Drakeford and Lewis taking more responsibility in, in that shooting circle. Maybe the inclusion of, um, of Corbin, that might be something that the coach will be toying with. Um, but Fisher doing well, but under a lot of pressure with that double mark there from Vimbele and uh, Maweni. Something just changed over the last few moments on court for England. They got a run or two back and Shimin read that beautifully. Doing well there, Shim. She has been quiet. I almost said I'd love to see Williams coming on, on, onto, on, onto, onto the goal defence position, but it's give Shim, Shimin an opportunity. Goal time, goal shooter. Goal shooter. Contact. George Fisher going back. Well, there goes the hoots. Of plenty of questions then for England to answer after that quarter time. But for South Africa, they came out like a train. Those changes, one of which was enforced upon them prior to the game, didn't show anywhere. In fact, if anything, they were pepped up. They deserve to be ahead. And they are ahead in this final game of the series, 16-10.
Well, South Africa in control at the moment. What's the first 15 minutes? They come out of the blocks very quickly. The score at the moment, 16-10 after the first quarter. I'm here with Serena and Pam. And Serena, England are in trouble. A little bit. Look, I think... Um... You know, it's a new combination down there. I think, obviously, you can't expect a player like Sophie Drakeford-Lewis to go out there and not make any mistakes. So I um, hope that just leaves her out there um, because she is a great player and she needs this, this experience. And I think that there is, is enough experience down there at the moment to get themselves back into the game. We've had some good turnover. We just haven't been able to necessarily get it to goal. And South Africa have started really well, so you can't take that away from them. They've been a lot more clinical. They've thought about what they're doing in the circle in terms of with the shooters, a lot of height in there. And then the opposite end, again, is that range um, of Mbeda and Pumza that's been putting our, you know, a bit of hesitancy into that attack end, which was expected before the game, so... We just saw Jess there. What will her words of wisdom be right now? Um, I think in the attacking end, where they, they as um, Sweeney was saying, they're getting a bit bunched in that circle. So the defensive end of Vimbella and Pumza Moweni, they're able to react. They're able to make it difficult for the feeders to see where the space is. So I think Sophie just needs to come out a little bit earlier, stay out a little bit longer, maybe take the first ball off the centre pass, let Nat get deep, so open up that space in there. Um, for, uh, so you're not satisfied with the feeds going into the circle at the moment because they just can't find that space. They can't they? find the space, yeah. They're struggling a little bit just to, to see where to put that ball, yeah. And in the, as Serena again said at the end, they need to shut it down in defence. Those shooter-to-shooter -shooter balls are going in there too easily and it's that height. Mm. OK, what will happen in the second quarter? Let's get back to commentary. Thank you. England says. England with the centre pass and Clark with that centre bib on. There's been a change and Laura Malcolm has come on at wing defence for England. So we asked if there would be that change made. Centre contact. And Haythorn Thwaite to Drakeford Lewis. She was given that opportunity. Danila Dadana alongside me, former South Africa captain that, that you wanted. Just got to shut those ones out. Especially from that distance. So much smoother in that transition through court for South Africa. And despite the close advances of Francis, another one on. So I put this question to you, Caroline. You know, if you look at both these teams and the way they've started this game, you know, you the, psych the psychological approach to this game, you know, co comparing now the South Africa and England, the way the South African uh, uh, spa approach has started this game, do you think maybe England came into it saying, okay, the series already in the bag, you know, we'll try a couple of changes and try a couple of new things, and spa approaches, their approach? Well, every game that Jess Delby has spoken about is about being positive and they want to win they want that that clean sweep of the games here in Cape Town and each of those individual players as well with points to prove from Fisher Drakeford Lewis with her second cap in there so they've all got individual points to prove too just think maybe just the unexpected fast start from South Africa a couple of those changes as well and just South Africa being much smoother than we've seen over the past couple of days yeah, and I don't think, you know, England could have called that uh, fainter and, and Lenny Sporkita would be a starting combination in the, sh in, in, the, in the shooting circle. Where you are, goal attack. And of course, the joy for South Africa is they've got strength and Radaman on the bench to, to come into it too, and we've seen what she's done over the past couple of days. Centre pass, England. Clark goes back to Laura Malcolm, who's come on in that wing defence position for England. Shimon on her debut. Francis was offering. And look at that, no way through for England. Great defensive work again from South Africa. But there's a puzzle in front of you. And England have just, you would think, read through the middle of it to and Fisher ending it. 19-12. Yeah, very, very clear to see the defensive plan here from the South African side, you know, setting up that zone defence, keeping England in that centre third for Maweni to, you know, to leap out of that circle to go out and take those aerial balls. Well, good hurdling from Drea. Oh, 
Haythor Thwaite. Just moving around Drakeford Lewis. It does seem a little better from England. <laughs> Still all that arm wrestling that's going in there from South Africa. They are having to work it out. Good knows in there. It takes a while to, to get into a game, too, with those, those couple of changes. And they are so inexperienced, these combinations. Oh, that one's going to hurt. Definitely it's going to hurt for, for Fisher. She wouldn't normally miss that shot from that distance. So awful for the Roses now to be tighter on defence, try and turn that ball. Fisher gets a talking to. That was frustration. I think from George Fisher then. And they're almost kissing. She knew they were too short then. Let me just tell you something. I'm looking at Fisher. I'm looking at the way she's tucked in her dress into her hot pant. That's what we do a lot here in Africa. We see a lot of our African uh, um, players do that a lot. Both sides actually. So she's got a little bit of African thing going on there. Bit of attitude. George Fisher. She asked me if I wanted to smell her shoes yesterday, uh, which I politely declined. I mean, what do they smell like? <laughs> what do they possibly smell like? I didn't like? get that close, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> Maybe they're lemon jellies. Construction, wing defense. Goal third, yes. Yes. Grizel and Polkita. And it's just business-like, isn't it, from South Africa? Nothing too fancy, but, but the drills are now working. Oh, that was smart from Drakeford Lewis. Went round the back of the post, back into play, and lays off to George Fisher. Construction goal defence. Yep. She doesn't give the defenders an opportunity to stretch in front of her. You must know she's confident once she shoots with that kind of quickness and intensity. Lenny Sportheater. Again, look at that gap that's opened up. South Africa were 16-8. Up in that Five first quarter. Another eight goals. The advantage now. Oh. Oh. That's an important call to go England's way. Yeah, my wedding on fire it's today. It's as if somebody whispered something in her ear and said, we're looking for your leadership in that circle. We need to turn South ball Africa. for South Africa if we stand any chance of winning, and that's what she's doing, delivering the goods. Was it you that whispered in her ear? Definitely not. I couldn't have come close to her to say, say could you reach? <laughs> oh! Well, from one call that goes England's way to one Full moment time. that South Africa will want to forget. And it's, it's a Bad slow ascent up Table Mountain at the moment for England, Bad but this attack. one will help just chipping things away. Well played, Matt Hayton Thwaite, England captain, just pulling the strings around that circle, but having to, again, because of the great work from South Africa. South president of Nepal, South Africa. Cecilia Molokwane looking attentively at her team, really wanting them to bank a win today. We caught up with her at the uh, welcome dinner, and the players as well just saying how much she's changed things and helped the team progress, of course, with Norma Plummer alongside her and the work that she did. They want to repay a little bit of that faith that they've had. Oh, you can see Pogita's face, I'm happy with that. Very unhappy, but she needs to continue for the play. Offside wing. 
inside the goal third. Just on time, please. Click on the white. It's in the goal third. So that's all about just trying to rearrange things and a bit more sweat on that court. When you are going full pelt across court, as all of these these players are doing, just that little bit of, of sweat and you're up and under. <laughs> Probably be thankful for a little bit of a breather as well. <laughs> Absolutely. It's hot on that court, let me tell you, Caroline. That was good work from the South African side. Oh, Malcolm says, not under my watch. Laura Malcolm had that wing defence position. One of those changes by Jess Thelby after that first quarter, working that out for England. Six and a half minutes of this half to go. Need to make this one count. Keeper obstruction. Well, they're not afraid to use the full court, England, but they're being made to by South Africa. So impressive, the work that South Africa are doing Africa. in and around that defensive circle at the moment. Contact keeper on the court. Goalkeeper in the wing area. Yes. No expression from Stacey Francis. Construction and Barney goal. One, then two little goes, but nothing was putting her off, was it? Not sure it's it's more a game of American football on the sidelines at the moment. Look how far she has to collect that ball. Oh, oh. Fisher. And the issue that England have got is it's the seven on court, but it's the thousands off it that just lift their side every time Bobby again. Brilliant side. atmosphere we've seen inside the velodrome over the last few days. This one goes Contact in, goal I'll give another roar. This to make it 24-17. With four and three quarter minutes left in this half, England aren't waiting any longer and the change happens. On comes Kadeen Corbin. Arguably had her a best game of the series yesterday. And it's Drakeford Lewis that makes way. And Sonella, that change has been made, but in the attacking end for England. Yeah, I'm happy with the change. I was Go asking the question defense. about Drakeford Lewis. She did step it up in the few minutes that she was on court in the second quarter, but I think Kadeen Corbin can come up and change things for England in that shooting circle. That is offside goal attack. And there is Corbin on court. Just passing the ball into the midriff of Haythorn-Thwaite. And then to Clark, and then to Fisher, and then it clicks. Yeah, she's fresh legs. She brings a completely different dynamic in that circle for England. So something that Zanella Vimbel is going to need to quickly pick up and work on countering. Okay. area. I can see your coach's face enjoying yes, that Peter. moment. <laughs> complete opposite <laughs> yeah totally I'm like what do you mean <laughs> <laughs> oh just when you you get that that little bit of a run on too Haythorn Thwaite and Corbin combining that is off side wing Center, obstruction at the top of the circle, further round, centre, further round. Yes. Clark with the fake Sorry. into Corbin. They'll have the throw as well. Your reaction was absolutely perfect, Zanella. Just showing the frustration from this South Africa side. And that's what didn't happen in that first oh. quarter. They were more consistent. They weren't giving England those opportunities of their own making. And then if England go up the other end and punish them, yes. as proved, 
It's just double whammy, isn't it? Oh, gosh, OK. And that's what uh, Kadeem Corbin is doing for me now. Hold She's time. really asking the questions to the combination of Mawini and Vimbella. Well, here's a moment for you. <laughs> if you could catch the umpire then. When England were training earlier in the week, an egg from the ceiling fell and smashed in the middle of emergency. court. <laughs> and now Laura Malcolm has been given time to head yes. off court and have some bird droppings removed from her hair. Okay. <laughs> but do you know what that means in our culture? She is the last person, person on the court. most blessed child on court. Well, if Laura Malcolm doesn't I wouldn't have wiped on, it. I wouldn't have wiped Leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. A lucky streak. <laughs> All the blessings are on Malcolm. <laughs> If she doesn't win player of the match after that, then she won't get a better chance. We are indoors, but we do have some friends up in the rafters watching over us. Oh, that was unlucky. They were still concentrating maybe on that moment. That one nearly touched the roof and in for South Africa. Credit to the feeder, the vision there to see Ina Marie Fenter all on her own in that shooting circle. You said it was lucky, did you? Mm. I'm telling you, Fisher's going to pinch herself. She's really not happy with oh, missing that shot from that distance. And looking attack. at the percentage, 93% South Africa, 80% England. Real difference at the moment. Great take from Venter. Oh, just on the follow it's through, the France is taking a tumble. Yes. Step forward, goal defence. Thank you. Yes. Total of 40 penalties. That South is Africa. extremely high, especially from English. 24 penalties. We have not even finished. We're not even half. We, we're, all, we're just almost halfway. Well, Zanella, as we approach that, that half time then, and seven goal difference. Looks like it's about to become eight. So that one cursed just over the top. Oh, and hold her head. She might. Because that's been a familiar buffer for South Africa in this game so far, that eight goals. Now England with a sense of urgency about them. Want to look to punish South Africa. Fisher, great take, great land, much smoother through court. And that was a reflection of what South Africa have been showing the Roses how to do. That was better from England. And their centre pass. They want to get another one in before the break. They will go into half time in an unfamiliar position here in Cape Town. They'll be behind. Before something does, but the call came. The call came. The Goodness me, Maweni has resurrected. This is the Pumza Maweni we know. We've been waiting for her. We're so glad she's arrived. Look how elated she is to fight for that ball, prevent England from scoring, the time running out. All psychological as the last few seconds of this half happened. South Africa were eight ahead, then eight ahead again. They go in with that six goal cushion at the break, but but the psychological advantage too is high fives all around from England. So much to think about for Jess Thirby. They find themselves behind for the first time in this series at half time. South Africa 27, England 21.
This is what happens when the world of comedy and sport collide. Hi. <laughs> First question. What is netball? It's fast, it's furious. Should we do a bit of passing, learn a few skills? That is not something I'm enthusiastic about. You want to make a W on the back of the ball? Oh, yeah. I remember that. Oh, do you remember? Try yeah. and keep your elbows in. Big fan. Play at school. Could have been a rose. Tiny Too lady. small to be a rose. <laughs> at what point do you go, hey everyone, I'm gay? But I think it's always been like a safe space for me. You like sisters, like you argue sometimes, but at the end of the day, you've always got each other's back. It was the <laughs> coolest moment of my life. Well, that's a look at what you can expect from I'm Game, a new series running all next week on Sky Sports in support of Stonewall's Race Laces campaign. Four in ten LGBT people think sport isn't welcoming, so Sky Sports are putting that to the test by taking well-known figures from the world of entertainment to experience sport for themselves, including couple Catherine and Sarah, who are both stand-up comedians and had their first taste of netball. That's Wednesday, 5.30, Sky Sports Mix. And they definitely enjoyed themselves. They had a lot of fun. Brilliant initiative, great campaign. Well, South Africa have definitely worked a few things out, some great combinations going on. Pam, you've got a few clips for us. Uh, I have a sneaky suspicion you might highlight how brilliant the South African attack has been so far. Yeah, who would have thought I'd talk about the attack? But, um, <laughs> hey, I picked out three today. So the first one for me um, is the wing attack drives through the court. They're being allowed to be able to get to the edge of the circle and feed the shooting. When you've got two tall timbers in there, it's, it makes it really easy. So if we start this one, as the ball's coming down the court, I just pause it there. So I talked about wanting to see Sophie DL take the first centre pass off the England um, centre pass, so the first phase ball, to be able to give space and attack. South Africa do this really well. Um, you can't see it's a bit blurry, but Potgita, goal attack, gets that first phase. She then offloads it down the court, to her wing attack. So Griesel for me has been on song. How she gets depth and gets the ball here, phenomenal. Look how much ground she's got created. Then you've got Venter in the back and her position on Stacey Francis. As a goalkeeper, when a shooter's on you like that one-on-one -on -one, and you've got the wing attack right on the edge of the circle, it's so difficult for you to mark because Griesel now can put the ball here, she can put the ball here, she can put the ball here anywhere in that area. Yeah. <laughs> As this ball gets in, easy for Venter to get that and turn and take the shot. That height is remarkable, isn't it? So, I yeah. Venter, I mean, how tall is she? God, I don't know inside, but I think at least six foot one, six foot two. Yeah, definitely so, six foot. And her uh, and Potgita, that, I mean, that relationship is working so well together, Serena. And that wing attack position that Pam's highlighted, just how important is it that you've got a mobile um, flamboyant wing attack to support both areas of the court? Yeah, look, it's huge. And I think if you look at kind of the South African t attacking in an, an hour one at the moment, that depth and that width is what opens up your shooters. And we haven't necessarily had that from the the Roses consistently enough in this game but you know from a South African point of view they have been getting down to that circle edge and when you've got two tall timbers like that you know from midcourt but midcourt point of view we want to be trying to hold them up and put pressure on early we haven't necessarily been doing that enough in this game which is why you've got these two under the post fairly open when they get to the circle edge yeah. what uh, other combinations have worked cool well? so I'll give you one more quick clip just to show you again how that center court is working again we see Greece will get that in the middle drive down the court and Dyer on the edge, again, a nice over. Again, really difficult. So England's attack, uh, defence, sorry, has to really push them up, hold them up the court so that the ball doesn't fly down so quickly and leave Francis really exposed in that defensive end. My last clip for you is the shooter to shooter. South Africa have been doing this really well. When I say shooter to shooter, I mean goal attack passing to the goal shooter or goal shooter passing to the goal attack. Okay. Again, the ball comes down, Dyer here, lands here with Potgita. She turns in sight. So again, look at Venter's position. She's holding high up the court. Even though she's behind Stacey here, look how much space she's got here in the back. So this ball, when Potgita turns, she has a field day. A lovely lifted weighted pass into that back space. And again, Venter under the post can just shoot. They're making it look very, very easy. How's Kate Shimon getting on? And you, are you quite happy to see her being allowed to have those 30 minutes? Because it's her first cap ever. It could have been easy for Jess Thilby to say, you know, this defence isn't working. I'm going to change that goal defence straight away. 
Yeah, look, I think, you know, you can't just look at one player. It's definitely as a four. I think they could be working a bit more effectively down there. Um, but again, look, massive respect to Jess for leaving um, Kate and also STL out there for as long as she did because it is a development tour and both of those players will have learned so much from the time that they've already spent out there on court. So maybe expect to change in the, that defensive end, whether it will be Kate, whether we'll see Fran Williams coming on or Raz. I'm not sure yet, but, um, you know, I think as a unit, you have to work together against the South African team to win, but it's not just down to one person. So I think that will probably be what Jess will be talking about to the girls um, yeah. come this second half. What changes do you want to see, Pam? Um, I think more space in that attacking end. So they're getting a bit clumped and that is allowing Pumza Mwene um, and Vimbella to work together. So spread them out. Don't allow them to work together. And in defence, shut it up higher up the court. So don't expose your keeper one-on-one -on -one in that back. Let's see if we can turn over ball a little bit earlier. Mm, that South African mid-court is performing so solidly together. It's going to be difficult for England. They are down by six goals. It's 27-11 and we're looking forward to the third quarter. Live from the Belleville Velodrome in a couple of minutes. It's been feisty and physical. Expect more of the same after the break. Jess Thilby has won the series, but she'll want to win all three games. And at the moment, the scoreline is 27-21. That is a six-goal difference by my maths, <laughs> which I'm hot on right now, girls. Uh, will we see changes? Um, I've got Pam and Serena with me in the studio. We're about to go out for the third quarter. And we've seen, we spoke about just before the break, what you'd like to see from England in terms of the, the camaraderie of this England Roses side that have been just put together. They've, they've only had a couple of training sessions together. It's been a very short time. It's quite intense period though Serena are you impressed so far by what you've seen over the last few days oh yeah massively look I think there was obviously a lot of talk after the World Cup around who our next roses are going to be and I think this particular test series has been an amazing showcase just to see you know the future of the, of the roses and the girls who've been working incredibly hard over the last five weeks to uh, to come and step out on the court so we've still got a whole half a game of netball to go and you know we've got a solid culture they'll be wanting to step out now and, and take this second half so I'm really interested to see what's going to happen in this third so great to uh, see international netball after to the World Cup and let's get back out to South Africa and our commentary team. Shooter position. So let's see what England will do now with two quarters remaining of this match. Well here's the first test. Set out contact. And Venter outside going 
head to head with Francis. Obstruction arms first. And Williams already called. Now we've seen Williams come out with a couple of brilliant intercepts here in Cape Town. The interesting point as well. Oh, and there's Van der Merwe, unfamiliar position for her. Well, South Africa haven't made a change, but they didn't need to, did they? Didn't need to make the change. If it's working, why change it? My question was, can they last at this intensity for the full duration of the game? And certainly this is a good start from South Africa with Van der Merwe taking that perfect intercept into that pocket. That eight goal gap appears again. Oh, just loose. Interesting point though that South Africa, that is their bench that is has experienced throughout this series. They've used a number of players that is up and running. Still no Bongim saw me for the South African side. English. She's happy to sit on that bench, especially when this combination of Drea and Crystal is working well for South Africa. She said that to the coach, didn't she? Take me out, I'm happy to be on the bench. Uh, that's great leadership, I feel. You know, you've got to know what is best for the team, and if you don't have to be as a captain, you're not guaranteed to have a starting starting opportunity. You need to fight for it. And I and she did say that both these players that? earned a starting um, opportunity. South Africa. Bella, one of the changes for this game for South Africa. Great ball cross court. Malcolm jumps up on the toes, thought she could have maybe got a bit closer to that one. Yes. Just stand up and out of play, that's it. Just hear Francis talking to Williams, anticipating what South Africa was going to do. That's great vision from Corbin. Finding Fisher that under that pole, unmarked by Maweni. Does seem to be a bit cleaner for England through to their that attacking end at the moment. Center. Hate on Thwait. Good movement from Jade Clark and Kadeem Corbin. Oh, One two with Hate on Thwait. Oh, and that contact was called again. Just contact. take a breath, take a moment before where you're going to deliver it. My Wendy! She's on fire. She is doing the part, the things that make the parts to be done in that circle. Switched on. She switched on. Very switched on. Goal attack obstruction. And easy as you do it, through it goes. Pumsa Mawaini, relatively new to the netball game, given her age. What a brilliant, brilliant sportswoman. There's been a lot of talk whether or not Punza only plays well when Carla uh, Pretorius is with her in the goal defence position. Well, today she's proving everybody wrong that she's capable of doing it with Zanele Vimbele assisting her. England still haven't managed to catch a shot of her son in the crowd at 10 years young. That was almost perfect timing. <laughs> He's aged a bit if that was, but I don't think it was. Oh. Stood up well, George Fisher. Okay. Yes, step forward. Thanks, Shooter. South Africa. Again, just creeping away from England. 32 26. 
just under nine minutes of this one. Reminder, England are 2-0 up in the series, but this is a, a very different performance we're seeing from South Africa. Corbin was free for a, a while then. Did well to get free again. South Africa! That, and that area of the court certainly working better for England. Working much better. What an error here for the Spa approach is losing that centre pass. Oh, Zanella Vimbela from nowhere. Well, I was just about to say maybe, maybe the past couple of days we're getting into the legs of South Africa. Vimbela doesn't have that excuse. Her fresh legs of today popping up and coming away with that win. Definitely have to pay off. She has been on the bench for two games. She's hungry to play and she's doing a super job. Also lifting her hand up and giving the coach something to think about when considering a team that's going to play in the Nations Cup in January. Frustration for her, though, is that they couldn't deliver that opportunity at the other end, yes. and England now have it back. Oh, good. Good body on body in that circle. And smart from George Fisher. England! Oh, and England's centre pass as well. So this to close in within four. Yeah, England taking it to South Africa in this quarter. It's a real test now of South Africa, and, and they've just failed that particular one. Clark and Williams, her introduction has certainly helped with Malcolm that too. Just defense. defensively, things tighten up for England. Now they're getting that those turnovers, that side. joy, giving the opportunity up into the hands of Gideon Corbin. And the 30 up for England. They can smell South Africa. They're closing in on them. And I did put this question, Caroline. I said, can South Africa run at this high intensity with the same combination for a full duration of the game? It's starting to tell now. The fatigue is starting to creep in. Will the coach ring in some fresh legs? Make a change. Who's she going to bring on? We've seen Radaman come on before. Does she change that circle that was working so well? Arguably, is it the circle or is it just better defensive work from England as well that's stopping South Africa getting those moments through? That is Corbin. Contact center. That is contact centre. Clark now on her backside too, seeing all this pressure being put on through Arms England. Up on the land goal defence. Construction goalkeeper, advantage goal. That's a very mobile circle all of a sudden from the English Roses. A lot of movement from Fisher and Corbin. You can just see on the how even it has been through this this game goal in terms of getting those chances. Yes. Just the shooting percentage, but going up, creeping up from England. South Africa were sat on 93% at one stage as well. And one thing I'm seeing now from the English Rose is they're setting up the defence that has been working for them phenomenally in the past two test games and really putting the pressure on the South African attack. There's another one. Garnage offside. Oh, oh great take from Fisher. Using, South stretching Africa. the whole of her wingspan. <laughs> Giving something different, he's fainter. Oh, Malcolm now. And Fisher comes out for it. Ends up in England hands. Outnumbering South Africa. Quick transition through court, making the most of it. England. And how sweet was that shot? Brilliant, you can see the face expression. Most clinical I've seen Corbin in this past, in, in this test series. Third so, quarter, so important, so important. And England, are they about to draw just level? Yes. Yeah, we call it the championship quarter, this one. Look at, just look at Fisher. The confidence has grown in confidence since the introduction of Kadeem Corbin. There you go. See our coach not having, very, having a very, Frustrated look there is coach the Red Barton Horst. That is I would too. Time that's come out. I would too. Yeah. Look at that run from England. Defense, obstruction just inside. It was arms, yes. Oh, don't 
do that. Replay. Replay. That was one off the tee. Let's go, easy girls. And Ziggy Berger, he can't even stop her shouting from the benches. N not even the whiplash suffered yesterday. Listen, if she, could, if she would want to play with that neck brace, I promise you that's how she loves the sport so much. She'll say, put me on court, I'm okay. If nothing else, you think her teammates would look across at her and say sorry for just making you a little bit more animated. Because they had two moments then that they could have perhaps eased her nerves and her tension. That one will get her shouting again, though. So 11 intercepts from South Africa and four from England. 20 turnovers from South Africa and 15 from England. You see Ima Marie Fenter calling for time there. There's going to be a change made by, by coach Dorit Bodenhorst. We're seeing Lefebvre Rudderman coming on court as a fresh, fresh legs. And it was in that first game, dare I mention it, when extra time happened that Rudderman in this quarter made that change and made that difference. England took a little while to work her out, but they've been exposed to her style now. They'll know what they're up against. Yep, I agree with you, Caroline. But she's a very smart player. She's able to reinvent herself, very creative in the shooting circle. Works well with Lenise Portlitter, and what I love about her is that when she gets that ball, she does not hesitate. She has the confidence to convert the goals, and that's what she's going to need to do in this game. She can see that movement around the circle, bobbing and weaving, finding space, in and out, pulling those defenders around. Um, very much like we saw last time she was on court. It works when you've got Poggy to there to back you up, doesn't it? Yeah, to take those okay. rebounds, most definitely. There's a chance for the Spa Proteus to make this a two-goal lead. I know that will frustrate the coach, but <laughs> given this atmosphere, the cauldron that they're in, it is quite easy to break early, just to overcook it. That is contact centre. Well, in the game of fine margins, you've won two goals up, South Africa, and a chance for the three that could prove all important come the end of this one. Contact goal is hard. Must say, Caroline, uh, Caroline, pardon me, you know, this is a We're great taste of character for, for South Africa to be leading almost, you know, the entire game and, and allowing England to creep back in. They have everything to play for. They couldn't have had the start that they had to let this game slip through their fingers. So they're going to be required to dig deep in this game and make sure that they close it off and bank a win. Obviously, England's just not going to allow them to just, you know, make that happen. They've come back Roll over and tickle their seven tongues. goals down. But this is actually, this is a, a situation that South Africa have watched with England. They've watched England be ahead of this series and pull them back, but just not had quite enough in the tank. But now have they got enough as we head into the final 15 minutes. Last minute and a half of this third quarter. England will still be behind, but they'll be a lot closer and with a lot more hope heading into that last 15. Held ball, though. Held ball. Well, I said they'd be a lot closer, but could this make things interesting? They were six goals ahead at half-time, South Africa. ahead now. Game one. This last quarter is going to be electrifying. Last 15 minutes of this international test series coming up. That is instruction goal attack. Wow. Goal defense. Goal defense. They won't mind. They'll take as long as they like. They'll keep asking questions. Just counts down that clock. Another one off for South Africa. For the lead that outside. they saw nibbled away at by England in this quarter, they pulled it back and they're about to extend their lead, heading down to the last 15 minutes. Everyone thinks they're a coach, right? And now South Africa Center are coaching on themselves on court. On court. Centre. Centre. England. 
Excellent centaur. Centaur, you're out. We thought we had seen it all. We were never ready for this great performance from both these teams in this last test match. But that was key from Stacey Francis, and then given away again by England. Not hold enough time on the, the clock shortly. Players, hold time. It's an intentional obstruction and caution, and it's a delay, so we're down here. Down here, down here. Caution and a delay against oh, England. <laughs> so still time on the clock? No. No, but South Africa will match their lead as they head into the final quarter. Well, this is unknown territory for England. For the Roses, something to think about. For South Africa, we're said to be a test of their mentality. So far ahead, rolled back in by England, and now they find themselves back in front in the Bellevue Arena. 41 that plays 36, 15 more minutes of this series to go. Maybe, just maybe, extra time too. So the scoreline is 41-36, South Africa leading, but England narrowly won that quarter, 15-14. Serena, Pam, my goodness, we were on the edge of our seats then. It could have been more for England. What were the errors that were happening at the end of that third quarter, Pam? Um, it was a couple of sloppy passes going in. Um... The three-second call we saw from Kadeem Corbin um, coming through the court, they just the excitement got to them, and then South Africa just lifted from it. The crowd really got behind them, pushed them forward. Zim Vimbella and Pumza have been coming out with some fab intercepts, and that's just lifting the whole team. And I think moving Potgita back to goal shooter, um, then to got a bit tired in that combination, she's now becoming their post, and, and it's making it really difficult for them. So um, they just need to lift again. They showed that they could pull it back, yeah. Um, but then it's just the brains just need to re-engage again and just keep doing the good stuff well. So South Africa had that change in attack with a new goal attack coming mm. in and Potgita, who's world renowned, so good at her game, mm. at goal shooter. And we saw the defence. We've seen the defence over the last three quarters being so solid. It, it, international level, Serena. How much does it wear you down when the opposition are just relentless? Oh, yeah, it's, it's usually was one of the things that we pride ourselves on, I think, as a Roses side as well. But it's, yeah, it's hard to attack against, and particularly it puts a lot of pressure on your shooters throughout that 60 minutes. So, you know, they'll be looking to basically be delivering exactly the same level of pressure in this last quarter. We are up against it, but we pulled it back once. Let's see if we can do it again. Yeah. Wise words. Let's get to commentary. Okay. South Africa a little bit of a, sh a short, sharp shock, which they rode out. We impressed the South Africans the way they dealt with that in that last quarter. Very impressed with the way the spa approaches took those, those changes. And in that third quarter, also taking in the introduction of the Febra de Man on that goal attack, they quickly adapted, you know, and they made it work for themselves. 50 minutes left, they have everything to play for. This is the start that they also want to make sure that they use their centre pass and convert the goal. The knee spot hit it, making no mistake. 
And that's what we've seen from him at the start of every quarter as well. Taking those moments of Adam Murmur came through. That's Pumza Mawemi at work again in that circle for South Africa. She has been outstanding, consistently so, in this game. Exercising patience, oh, South Africa. That's a brilliant give and go from Chrysal. Makes no mistake again, Lenise Porthitten. You must know when she takes those shots from that distance, her confidence levels are on a high. That is offside. Construction goal defence. England need to be quicker on these transitions through, but difficult. And South Africa putting on such a great defensive display. Not always legal, of course. Haythorn Thwait, England captain. Oh, how she'd want in her first England captain series to take a clean sheet. Contact centre, centre third. Centre third. England would have expected this Anella from South Africa coming out in this final quarter. And all the time we've questioned actually the staying power of, of South Africa. Showed it in that very first test, taking it all the way. This lead at the moment, you think they can Thanks, maintain it? They have to maintain it, Caroline. If we go by the past two uh, test games that they've played, they weren't able to do it. But I think psychologically, you know, they, they, they are in it and they're going to go all the way. They've worked so hard, had a brilliant start and maintained the lead throughout this game. They cannot go and let it go in the last few minutes like they have been in the past, like they had in the past two uh, test games. Goal for goal, not good enough for England. They need those intercepts. Oh, beautiful ball Contact. over the top. Risky. Risky. Yes. And that's kind of what we've seen from South Africa. Not afraid to take risks throughout this, this tournament as well with substitutions, with changes. Yep, back to that six-goal lead. Get into the hands of Malcolm. There's the desire and hunger from South Africa. Just too smooth, just too good. Unfortunately, Ranaman unable to, to sink that one. Inside the circle. Romay thought she had Hold taken on. that intercept. It's, it's just so dramatic. It's just so yep. dramatic. But this is what we expect in the last quarter of the test series. And it's worth it, it is worth stressing. <laughs> just the experience that this South Africa team have. Oh, England and this seven that's currently on court as well. That is this is the tight attack. tussle we expected. The reset from Kadeen Corbin. Oh! What are those winds that roll across Cape Town? I think England needed one of those then. It could be what fell on Malcolm's head, rather. Bandage obstruction we attack. Plenty of time for England to come back in this, but not with South Africa so smooth through. We've seen the England players warming up in the background. I wonder at what point Jess Thirby thinks about 
introducing some more, whether she'll play the seven to the end. Yep, well, there's a card wheel still sitting there. Could, could she come on as a goal shooter for England? Francis read that beautifully. Just couldn't get in the hands of Williams on the back up. England! Yep, we say dynamite comes in small packages, and that's exactly who Lefebvre Rad Radaman is. She really has been something special and is something special for the spa approach. She is one of the newest caps in this team. But there have been bookends for South Africa. Mawene and Potgita at both ends have led. And at the moment, proving the ultimate difference for this South Africa side. Yeah, they're showing up in this game. The South Africans. Look at those turnovers. 27 turnovers to England, 17. Really, has been a great effort from South Africa when it comes to defending. Drea and Radaman doesn't mind where she shoots from. There's that smile. There was it was a grimace, wasn't it? We saw in that third quarter. Yeah, it's coming back. We're not seeing the teeth yet. We're still waiting to see the teeth from Coach Dorit Barnhorst. Well, what about this for a moment? Radaman with the lean back, about to pull the 50 up for South Africa. The gap out to 10. Surely, surely England can't pull it back from here. This will be character if they can. Seven and three quarter minutes left. Great work again from South Africa. Spring in their toes. Fisher, just got to do her job. Now back to you defenders. So my coach at this stage would say, all you have to do is keep your own center pass. It's easier said than done. Because it's not like England oh, is going to go all asleep and that's what Kadeem Corbin is saying. Oh, she's not Even happy with that one. She was convinced it looked like a good take from It was Tom. a good job she wasn't on screen at that point. <laughs> yeah, Corbin went for a little walk down court. Fisher are trying to get one back again. They are getting closer, England. But when you've got Poggita in ridiculous form, there's not a lot you can do. That's the best word you've used, Caroline. Ridiculous indeed. I was expecting her to play out and get closer to the pole, but she says, no, I can sink it from this distance. Obstruction. South Africa. Crowd feeling it now, aren't they? Bongi and Somi said she didn't mind sitting on the bench, sitting this one out. What a brilliant view she's got of her South Africa team. Are they about to win this one? Yeah, they're capable of doing it without Bongi and Somi, and I'm telling you, she's very proud of her troops. It's also important to be able to lead from the bench or on the bench. Well, they keep ticking them off, England. They just need to... That <laughs> That's one way of making the ball stick. That'd be my method. Get as much chocolate on your hands. <laughs> Held. Send the third. OK, this could make it interesting. Hey, Thornthwaite opts to go long. Clark's there waiting for him. No! Those hands! How familiar have those hands been throughout this game? They've been better. Well, any combination, no way through. So impressed and so happy that Vimbele has stepped up, given an opportunity to get a starting uh, opportunity and also stay the full duration on court. She has been hungry to play. And the coach has shown trust and confidence in her. She's been phenomenal for South Africa in that goal defense position. Well, again, 
that was that all that great half. work defensively from South Africa. Another one off. There's beautiful singing going on inside the velodrome now. Hard time injury goal defence. So a change is coming for England. A couple of changes. Three changes. Take all seven. No, just the three. So everyone's changing off. This will give South Africa another problem. In with that centre bib, Nat Panagari to another change. There's Cardwell on the goal attack. Francis still with that goal defence bib on to Malcolm, a wing defence. The ball bulleted in to Cardwell, who's come out for it. Obstruction then from Drea. Panagari finds Cardwell. Cardwell in that circle now with George Fisher. See England opting for that height, tall and tall in that shooting circle to close this match off. This one is not done yet. Back to seven. Now they need that defensive work again. Oh. Okay, England. Panagari goes low for that one. Cardwell back out doing work and Maweni on the fly through. England will have it. Did you expect anything else from this series that's given you a little bit of everything? Cardwell with another. How's the heart doing, Tanella? It's still beating. Now the defence, defence cries again. We haven't heard those yet in this game. Oh, no! Fisher missing it again under the post. Oh, that one all hurts. With three minutes on, had that one gone in? Reset England. <laughs> Carol, I think it's fair to say it's done. You think it's done? Never done till it's done. Another dumbs. Uh, Rachel until, Dunn, she's uh, not here. She's not here until <laughs> that fat lady sings, they say. Oh, there's oh. one. Malcolm just tips Where off the top. Oh, they won't mind whether that ball's gone into the harbour, round past Thank Nando's. You. Thanks for the attack. <laughs> yes. Six goals, two and a half minutes. Not going to happen, is it? They need the ball now, England. South Africa won't let them have it, protecting it like a newborn child, taking it around court. Radaman, she'll have a go from here. Kwashi on at that position, puts her off. Good backup with Francis. Into Malcolm. Kwashi. Great defensive work again from South Africa. England will need to be quick. It is possible, but surely too much. That's it gone. Surely that's it gone. Yeah. I think it's done. That was great from Zanele Vimbele. Bandage offside and holding centre. Drea will take the time, pass it off to Pogita. And there are a few certainties in life, but you get the ball to Lenise Pogita and given her form particularly over this series, she'll make it go through. Now they can showboat. Enjoy the moment on court. Way too good. Just too good they've been. This combination of Paul Peter and Radaman. Something special is brewing there. Advantage offside, centre third. Centre third. Yeah, that is one of the new combinations for South Africa. That's a, another reason to be cheerful for them. Great right, little feed through. The side keep up, keep up. But for England, Zanella, even though they'll have lost this one, so little time spent together in these combinations. This whole ch cell changes through the squad, just four that have arrived here from that World Cup, up against the nine that were here for South Africa. And they have tried and shown those moments. Great to see Stacey Francis back in too. But for player of the match, I guess you could go either end. Are you going to go Pogheta or are you going to go Moweni? Zanella, who's your player of the match? Definitely going Kunza Maweni. I think she's been outstanding, so consistent. 
turning ball after ball for for South Africa. We've been waiting and looking for her, looking to her to step it up in the defence for South Africa. And I think today she arrived and uh, is worthy of being the player of this match. Both ends then impressive for South Africa, but through court as well. They've shut down England, made them work across that court. But as the clock counts down inside the velodrome, it's not the series, but the ball will end up in South Africa hands. And with it, the win. They've shown heart, they've shown their pride, and South Africa have that win that they so wanted. They don't take the series, but they land that final blow here in Cape Town. It's been a great performance from both these teams. Hats off to, to the English Roses and to the Spa Pro Cheers. Been phenomenal to watch them display their gifts and talents. Everything to play for, we said at the beginning of this game, for the Spa Pro Cheers, and they did not put a foot wrong right from that first whistle. The positives for England, the debut for Kate Shimon, another cap in there for Sophie Drakeford Lewis. New combinations through court, and they take the series, but it's South Africa with a final win. They go down over the three days, but they take today 54 48. Oh, what a few days we've had, Zanella, here in the velodrome. From that very first game, going all the way to extra time to today, the birds mess in the nest and that win for South Africa. For the Proteas, there were changes that England made in that last quarter. and England got right back at them in the third, but it was crucial, really, wasn't it, that third quarter that actually South Africa rode it. And to get through that and take that momentum into that final 15. Yeah, I think, you know, it was good for South Africa to take those changes uh, that England made in that third quarter. But for me, what was key is when the coach of the Spa approaches, the Red Barn, who's opted to bring um, Lefebvre Radaman in the goal attack and the way she combined so well with Porchito, really asking the defenders of England a whole lot of questions that they really couldn't answer. And South Africa just pulling away and maintaining that lead. We saw it from the beginning of the game. They were leading by, at some stage, six, seven goals, and they kept maintaining it. This has been an impressive performance from the Spa approaches. I think they can be very proud of themselves. They did play for pride. They couldn't have allowed it to be a clean sweep. Those errors throughout, actually, those last three days, when we talk about just how tough it is to go back to back to back, particularly after that extra time as well, what Strebaden was did do was expose her players, the bench as well, to game time, so that every time they came on court, you felt like there would be an injection of something. Penalties for England in that. You're going to look at that as a coach, and, and that's one of the areas to focus on. Definitely. We haven't seen that high penalty rate from England. It's the first time they... So that's definitely something to go back to the drawing board and really fix, look at and fix. Uh, Fairly equal when it comes to goal percentages, 84 for South Africa and 83 for England. What a lovely moment for South Africa and they deserve that the way that they've played throughout this tournament. And both these coaches actually have wanted the players to lead from the front. Bongi and Somi, captain on court and off it for this too. But our player of the match, Pumza Moweni, just Sean, I mean, it's, it's fairly, that's one of the easiest ones you'll, you'll ever get to name, isn't it? Yeah, I was very impressed with the way she played today. She was very quiet for me in yesterday's test game. And today she really showed up from that first ball that she took. And she was consistent throughout. And this is the kind of leadership we're looking for from a player of Pumza Mawena's caliber. And I know we go on about, you know, we called it a Hollywood story a couple of days ago. Uh, the young mum was, when her son was six years old, that she played her first senior level netball. Such a rapid rise for her, but just one of players, one of the South Africa players that have stood out in this game. A win then for South Africa. Let's get some more reaction from Andy, who's down courtside. And uh, for one last time, thank you very much to Caroline Barker as well as Daniel M. Dota and our wonderful commentary team that's been giving us all the action here at the Spa Challenge. I am joined indeed by the player of the match. It is Pumza Maweni and uh, she gets her prize handed over courtesy of Spa.
Well, that much improved performance from the side and finally getting that victory in the series? Oh, I think we we done our homework. Um, we really step up. I think everyone deserves this uh, trophy today. We really push hard um, for just to finish strong as a team. I, we're, I'm really, really proud of our girls. And what do you think was different for the side here today in terms of how you applied yourselves? Uh, I think we, we all um, step up and we put the pressure and we convict our turnovers. I think um, the defence side yesterday, we didn't did, we do well and then we we tried our best uh, today to turn a lot of falls and then we, we really spoke about it to convict all the turnovers. Well, uh, playing at home here in Cape Town and getting a play of the match accolade, that must be quite a special one for you. Oh yeah, yeah of, of course. This uh, atmosphere is amazing. The crowd, everyone here, it's very, really amazing, really thankful. And thank you to the England for giving us a hard time. It was not an easy game, but we really made it today. Congratulations, Pumza. Thank you so much. That is uh, the player of the match, Pumza Maweni, the goalkeeper for the South African Spa Pro T as well. Then that's how things are set up in terms of the series. It is a 2-1 then overall in terms of the three-match series in favour of the Vitality Roses. But South Africa having a bit of a say in terms of the outcome. They get a victory, the first one of the weekend here in the final game here of the Spa Challenge. And earlier on, we did see the curtain raiser. It's a whitewash for the Spa Baby Pro Tears. A 3-0, the final uh, result there in terms of they playing against Lesotho. That sets us up for the post-match presentation where we will be uh, recognizing the top players in the terms of the series performance here at the Spa Challenge. The best shooter, best defender, best center court player and of course that trophy that both sides have been playing for and that will be lifted by the Vitality Roses of England. So do stay with us uh, with the post-match presentations that are coming up very shortly. So many awards to look forward to, ladies. <laughs> a bit like Tracy Neville yesterday. She's won an award a day over the last couple of weeks and her mantelpiece is packed. But uh, England winning the series 2-1, as we've just heard. But disappointment today for the Roses, losing out. Pam, what went wrong for them? South Africa came out with a flame and a fashion vision. They wanted to lock this down. Started in defence. Pumsa Mwaweni and Vimbella, goalkeeper, goal defence. They were a wall. England only scored 48 goals in that whole game. That is low, and it's that a very was very low score, isn't it? Really low for the and the pre, it was the pressure that they put on them. They sat off and they played onto the ball, so they, it wasn't the man on man that we kind of seen. But then also having Van der Merwe at wing defence, where we normally see her, so she's really strong in that position as well. So they had a real solid back line that England were unable to penetrate through. Serena, it really, as Pumsa alluded to, you know they had done the homework and it really looked like that they figured out what the England side were doing and performed on state on the biggest stage today yeah definitely and uh, you know they had to you know they were, they were down you know two nil at that point going into the last game so sometimes a bit like what Tamsin alluded to you know they really had nothing to lose today it was about pride it was about going out there for each other and, and they certainly did that and it rattled us at the beginning of that game you know to go six seven eight one down um, it's, it's tough at international level to then even bring yourself back into the game and you saw the energy required to just bring ourselves back to drawing at 34 35 all but then then to then create an additional energy within that group to then obviously push further forward in that game was always going to be tough when you're against a Proteus team which, which had their tails up today. Mm -hmm. When you lose the first quarter by six goals, 16-10 after the first quarter, I mean the stats aren't great are they? I don't know the, the exact percentage but teams that go on to come back and win a game mm -hmm. is very, very low. Mm -hmm. um, which England, they proved that they... They did get back into the game, as you've just said, but South Africa, their strength in depth, when exactly do you feel in the game they, they pulled away? It was definitely in that third quarter. So um, you always, we were talking about it earlier, you want to be within five um, going into half time at least, or at the end of every quarter. And then England were just, I think it was six going into half time. So we thought they were, they were still in it. But England started that third quarter so well, and it was that strength that got them through. But South Africa, they rode the wave and then the coach made the change, taking off Venta, putting Potgita back in at goal shooter as we see here. So she, she was able to go back in and settle the attacking end for South Africa, provide that target and keep that movement going through with the likes of Radaman as we've seen before. So 
I think South Africa did really well in terms of riding that wave of England in that third quarter and then being able to step up and make the opportunities when England made mistakes. England were deflated mm. and so that meant South Africa were able to push on again and then from then on the game was lost. Yeah, too many errors from the yeah. England Roses. Well, let's get uh, down, back down to the Belleville Stadium and take a look at the presentation as uh, we said some, so many awards taking place and to talk us through this is Caroline Barker in commentary. <laughs> Perfectly marshalled. And now we move to the most accurate shooter of the Spa Challenge, and that is uh, Lenny Sporthater, the goal shooter of the Spa Pro Team. Now we move to the centre court, making sure that all the balls get to the shooting circle. The best centre court player of the Spa Challenge it is that the captain of the Vitality Roses, Natalie Hayden Thwaite. And we move to the back of the court with the award for the best defender of the Spa Challenge, marking her return to international netball after two years away. It is Stacey Francis of the Vitality Roses. And to round things off, the most valuable player of the series, Shadeen van der Merwe of the Spa Pro Team. And now we are going to call the runners up in terms of the spa challenge or rather the the winners of the spa challenge it is the vitality roses and we're going to have uh, the captain coming forward to uh, get the trophy lift the trophy in front of everybody here and that's going to be handed over by nepal south africa president cecilia molokwane as uh, we ask the girls uh, to join nat uh, to lift this trophy here Well, it was a hard-fought series, wasn't it, uh, for the Vitality Roses, but uh, getting those two victories very early on to secure a series win 2-1 against the Spa Proteas here in Cape Town. Congratulations for the Roses and their captain, Nat Haythorn Thwaite, who I'm sure has learned so much over the last few days, celebrating with his side. A defeat today to SA, but a victory overall in the series. 2-1, confirmation of that. Great to include their training partners as well. There's Gabby Marshall, Summer Artman, a vital part of this squad. Kat Ratnapala on that back row, having a bit of a boogie. And Laura Malcolm on the right of Nat Haythorn Thwaite who was uh, incredibly influential in this series. Some outstanding performances, some really good combinations as well. Combinations for the future. And speaking of the future, just around the corner, straight after Christmas, we're back with more international netball. It is the Nations Cup. 
and it all kicks off in Nottingham on January the 19th. England, New Zealand, my goodness, a repeat of that semi-final in the World Cup and Jamaica taking on South Africa. Don't forget, Australia not part of this series while they regroup after losing the World Cup final in July. I'm sure a lot's going on behind the scenes there. January the 22nd, we're in Birmingham, England, South Africa, uh, another game, Jamaica, New Zealand, and then the weekend of the 25th, 26th, we're in East London at the Copper Box, England, Jamaica, New Zealand, South Africa, and then it's the playoff places. Jess is very happy, isn't she? Three games in charge, 2-1 so far. Serena Pam in the studio with me. Serena, what have they learned from the last three matches? Look, I think we've exposed players. We've had Nat Hayfenthwaite in a leadership position for the first time in an England dress, which I think has been amazing to see. Uh, I think we've learned how to, well, the, how you get punished through error rate and also how you can see out a game. And, it, you know, this England team here have done a bit of both, been on the losing end of it today, but also in those first two games, they were able to push through with clinical performances in those third and fourth quarters to get the win. So I think there'll be a lot of learnings for different players. Um, great to see Sophie out there. I'm sure she probably will be a little bit disappointed with a couple of the errors that she made, but she will learn so much from this experience. So just to see, I guess, those learnings and that development, um, it's been great. Yeah. Mm. Who stood out for you, Pam? Um, from the England team, definitely Nat Haythorn-Thwaite as captain throughout this competition. I think she pretty much played every quarter of every game. So um, she's got some legs and some lungs on her. Um, but it was her vision into the circle, her movement. Oh, so beautiful to watch how she offloads defenders and gets space and then she's composed on the pass. Really, really great to see. I'd like to see George Fisher coming out and those young ones getting a go. Sophie DL, I'm glad she played today to get that international experience. And, and Jess would have really learnt a lot from that team and they would have all learnt about themselves as well, getting that exposure on the international stage and be able to win this series, um, it will give them great confidence. OK, well, a lot of sport coming away on Sky Sports and we're starting off with the boxing. Live coverage from Saudi Arabia gets underway next Saturday, December the 7th from 5pm on Sky Sports Box Office. Sky customers should go to Channel 491 or Box Office to book this event. For more info on all the ways to watch, go to skysports.com forward slash Joshua Virgin Media and talk to all customers. Please contact your operator. Cricket tonight. It's an early start again. Well, it's 9pm, but it's a, it is an early start. New Zealand, England, the second test, day four. And Super Sunday comprises of Norwich, Arsenal, one o'clock tomorrow, and Leicester against Everton. And finally, we are back for the Nations Cup, January the 19th. England play New Zealand and South Africa play Jamaica. The England Roses bloomed out in South Africa. Thank you, Serena. Thanks, Pam. All that's left to say, Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> Sports. Feel it all.